Dubai is flooded. Georgia is protesting its foreign agents law inspired by Russia. Secondary sanctions are killing Russia slowly. Russia loses Chinese electronic components imports. The Taliban are back with a big bang. Ukraine joins NATO, only its cybersecurity unit this time. And the biggest news of the week, Iran attacks Israel and fails miserably, perhaps on purpose. Howdy, howdy, friends. My name is Konstantino. Welcome to Inside Russia, where usual Russia is explained by the unusual Russian me. Every Wednesday, I give you Russian take on important world's news. And let's jump to the news number one, straight to the beginning. This very first news comes from the United Arab Emirates, from the city of Dubai. What do you know of Dubai? It's an engineering marvel of the world located in the middle of a desert, a vacation land for many, hot, always sunny, oh, nice place. Uh, and by the way, it n never rains in Dubai. Well, should never say never. Uh, wasn't so sunny yesterday when the storm of the century hit Dubai. And see for yourself, this is what happened in Dubai yesterday. I personally have not seen anything like that happening there. Um, it's very strange for the middle of a desert... This uh, wind, absolutely incredible. Not just rain, but wind. Um, from what from what I understand, dust storms happen in Dubai, but rainstorms like this, absolutely insane. Look at the flooding. Just like Orsk. <laughs> Dubai airport was shut down for a few few hours and it did not receive any flights no planes landed no planes took off obviously they can't take off on this and this is a pretty scary side i've been to dubai and i've seen these places but n not with <laughs> so much water it's funny someone even has a umbrella in dubai perhaps against sun And I'm pretty sure that drivers there are very unfamiliar with this amount of water. And this is one of the biggest shopping malls in the world. It's called the Dubai Mall. And it was flooded. And, you know, I don't... What the heck? This doesn't look like Dubai. It looks like Florida during a hurricane. Me today no come job. Job no coming today. Me... Water too much, road, road, water too much. And I absolutely agree with this fella right here again. Me today no come job, water job no coming much. today. Me, water too much, road, road, water too much. You know, these things happen once in a while and something tells me that... Dubai will get back to normal sunny in just a couple of days. But you know what? I want you to remember one thing. In the last couple of days, I talked a lot about the floodings that are currently happening in Russia, in the southeast, especially in the city of Orsk. And yesterday, I made a live stream revealing that a son and the family of the mayor of Orsk, Vasily Kazupitsa, evacuated to Dubai and now they bought themselves an apartment and a nice place and now uh, they live in Dubai and then they're hiding from the floods of Orsk. Well, the floods have followed the Kazupitsas to Dubai. The next news comes from Georgia, the country, not the state. Foreign agents. If you followed my channel for some time, you must have heard of foreign agents. In Russia, and now Russian government, it seems like Russian government is using this um, 
foreign agent and spreading it all in, in the neighboring countries. You see, it um, adopted this new law uh, about 12 years ago or so, uh, the law of foreign agents. And it started sl start and slowly started using it against own citizens. Um, you know, the goal of foreign la agent law was decent, as it was explained to Russian citizens, but they ended up using it to oppress and prosecute Russian citizens, and they have made it a crazy oppressive tool. Well, it looks like uh, Russia is now not alone. Protests have started again in Georgia. Georgia, the country that is located between Russia and Armenia. Due to foreign agent law um, that the ruling Georgian Dream political party called Georgian Dream is trying to pass for the second time. I remind you, about six, time, six years ago, uh, six months ago, they tried to do the same thing. And then people of Georgia came out and staged large protests and the, this political party, pro-Russian party Georgian Dream, they might have as well would name it Russian Dream, you know, um, it backed out. Thousands of Georgians uh, started protesting, came out on the streets and um, they put, well, at least they slowed down what they called the Russian law. Uh, they said they killed it, but they ended up not killing it, but delaying it. Because right now, Georgia Dream, which aims to stay in power after the upcoming parliament, parliamentary elections, is not willing to back down. It's bringing the law back. After Russia invaded Ukraine, Georgia, just as for many years, um, had been one of main anti-Russian forces in the post-Soviet world, started turning towards Russia. Georgia has not joined any sanctions against Russia and refused to supply weapons to Ukraine. Russian political activists and opposing um, opposition journalists are not allowed into the country easily. In May 2023, Vladimir Putin restored direct flights to Georgia and allowed Georgian citizens visa-free travel to Russia. Georgian political opposition believes that the Georgian Dream political party that has introduced this bill on foreign agent um, is currently under Russian influence. And it is very sad, as I remember, how Russian government was started turning Russia into the totalitarian state. It was a long but sure process, and I call it stepping stones. Thousands of small steps, one small unnoticeable time, a step at a time. And foreign agent law was one of the first steps. The foundation of this new oppressive government that Russia has, Russian government has become. So, Georgians, if you fail to protect yourself from this law today, tomorrow you will be waking up as foreign agents. Simply those who dare to oppose the governments. Just like us Russians wake up finding ourselves foreign agents for nothing. So, but actually, not everything has lost for Georgia. Check out what's happening on the streets of Tbilisi right now as I speak. So many people out, and you see how Georgia is so, still so much freer than Russia. The police is not using violence against the Georgians. Look, the police has simply blocked the building and they're not letting people to get inside. I don't know whether it's lawful or not, you know, I'm not a big expert on Georgian laws, but what I really like is that they're being normal people, they're not using violence. And this is what's happening, um, again, right now, on the streets of Tbilisi, 
in front of the parliament uh, looks like tens of thousands of people have come out and they're just staging protest they're saying a firm no to the foreign agent law pro-russian law and you know what that better because they have a very sad example in front of their eyes that is russia People are pretty brave. More protesting. You know, Georgians, you go ahead and kill that foreign agent bill. Because we Russians, we've been there before and we've done that and we've failed miserably. And you know what? It doesn't taste well now. I hope Georgia will remain free. And if you want to see the positive reaction about this situation happening in Georgia, you know, go watch Russian propaganda. Oh, they are happy, happy, happy about this instability happening in Belize. It's pretty bad. Well, another news comes from uh, the USA. Good old America, the U.S. Office of Foreign Asset Control has placed more sanctions onto Russia. On April 12th, two more bans were imposed. And the first ban is on the supply of certain metals, such as aluminum, nickel, copper, uh, pr that, that are produced in Russia. Um, from starting April 13th of this year, 2024, Major exchanges such as London Metal Exchange and the Chicago M M Mercantile Exchange won't be able to do any operations with that uh, Russian metals. Again, April 13th, 2024 is the date that marks the stop of operations with Russian metals. The second ban prohibits U.S. companies from providing services related to the purchase of these metals as well as their export, re-export, and other kinds of supply. And this is big, big hit on Russian economy. Before, it was oil and natural gas, for the most part, you know. And now it's metals. The biggest danger that Russian biggest customers, Turkey and China, will stop buying Russian metals just in case, just to be safe rather than be sorry later and it is another blow to russian economy i guess everything is going according to the plan putin's plan you know one thing amazes me these news are available to russian people the bad the good and the ugly okay and this is uh, i'd say somewhere between the bad and ugly okay it's just the news in Russia are there, but they are downplayed, meaning they are released once in a very, um, well, not such a big news outlet, not on a major channel, and that's it. So Russia propaganda can always later say, hey, we've showed everything for you, um, and it was your choice not to pay attention. So it's out there. I have found it, and Russians can find it also. And I just don't understand why they're not paying attention. Because this stuff is huge. Oh, by the way, do you know how one can tell that it is serious in Russia? Russian propaganda keeps silence, and as if nothing happened. In this particular case, Russia propaganda also keeps silence. Um... Another news comes from China, and China is a bearer of bad news for Russia this, this, this week. Russian electronics manufacturers, um, there are companies that manufacture, but I should, shouldn't really say that they, they manufacture electronics. They assemble. Because what they do, they buy components, electronics components, in China and import to Russia. Because the components are not manufactured in Russia zilch none zero okay 
So Russian electronics manufacturers slash assemblers are facing significant challenge because of China. Since the end of March, payments for components and assembly kits from China have completely stopped. It has been causing disruptions in supplies and halting production. The first major difficulties with paying for electronics using Chinese banks, including payments in Chinese currency, Yuan, really began quite some time ago, in December, following the strengthening of U.S. secondary sanctions. And they were related to finished products. And these issues now uh, have spread to components and servers. So before, finished products, now components for servers, storage systems, laptops, and other electronics. Read drones. This payment blockades, uh, and because that's what uh, the Chinese have been doing, they've been blockading payments. These blockades are absolutely severe, and basically money stopped flowing from and uh, well to China and out of China. <coughs> Uh, these blockades are severe, and they even have affected the companies that have worked under long-term contracts with Chinese suppliers that have a history of years of working, you know, that are fairly transparent for Chinese banks. There's no suspicion. So Russian electronics manufacturers are in difficult position because they have no alternatives. Almost all the world's electronic components are manufactured in China. And if the situation continues, electronic production in Russia could stop for up to six months until they find some way how to you know, get the money into China. And if they don't, that's going to be even longer than six months. Um... There will be no deliveries of components, electronics, kits to Russian manufacturers within the next two to three months. Because right now they're still receiving um, the kits and the parts that left China a couple weeks ago that they, they paid for in the past. Well, you know, I've been saying that the secondary sanctions are a slow and silent killer of Russian economy. I've been saying that since um, summer of 2022, because that's when the Americans started paying closer attention to the secondary sanctions. And right now, we're seeing just that in action. The secondary sanctions are working. It's taken them, well, it took them, no, it's, ta it's taken. It's taken them quite some time, but they are working now. The Americans delivered China a warning some months ago. Hey, in Russia they were saying, what's the big deal? Eh, just look, China um, is our friend. You know, China is not going to betray us. China will continue. China doesn't care about America. Eh, disregards. China is America's friend, uh, enemy, not friend. And a few months later, boom. All imports of electronic components from China suddenly stop. And Russians don't really know what to do. Hmm, I wonder where they'll be getting components for attack drones now. And the next news is very short, quick, and pretty shameful. Uh, remember last Wednesday, the news came that Russia invited the Taliban to visit an international conference held in Kazan, in one of Russia's provinces. Well, the invitation was initiated by the conference organizers and confirmed by Russia's Ministry of Foreign Affairs. The craziness of the situation is that the Taliban has been officially made an illegal organization in Russia by the Attorney General's office and labeled as terrorists. Even if you even mention the Taliban in Russia without adding that it's a terrorist organization, illegal in Russia, you'd break a law and it would be a serious crime. 
Yes, every time you mention the Taliban, you must say, the Taliban, oh, that's an illegal terrorist organization. And the Taliban are named terrorists for a very good reason. You know that, I know that, everyone knows that. They are terrorists and they are extremists after all. And now, ba -ba 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 -bum, get this, a decision is being discussed in the Russian government, in, in the Russian Ministry of um, Foreign Affairs, to lift Taliban's status of terrorists. To recognize them as a normal country, a normal government, and establish diplomatic relations with them. Hasn't been done yet, but it's being discussed, and the chances are it'll be done. Shame, shame, shame. You know, it'd be funny to see how Russian propaganda would turn around. The same people who have been cursing the Taliban for years saying they're no good scumbags and terrorists and the worst the humanity has ever produced. That They've been saying that in the past, all Russian propaganda. And soon they'll be praising them. I wonder what they're going to do, how they're going to do that. Shame, shame, shame. Who? By the way, the news are happening now as I speak, and Russia has entered a later stage of its demise. I call it the demise, and the news are plenty. They come out every day. And you know what? I simply can't cover them all. And this is why every day I select nine news that I find important and make them available for patrons and sponsors of Inside Russia. Nine news that matter along with my explanation and analysis and comments in every post. And if you join Patreon at patreon.com and you become a patron, you'll get access to nine news that will make you an expert on what's happening in Russia at any given time. So sign up. I'm going to link down there below in the description. Thank you. Another news comes from NATO. NATO, 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 the enemy of Russia, well, all of a sudden. By the way, this Friday, in the upcoming Friday Crazy, uh, Friday Crazy News Update, I will show you a very interesting footage. I found a little piece of film uh, of Vladimir Putin was given an interview in 2000, where he was praising NATO and saying that uh, NATO, it's impossible for NATO to be Russia's enemy. But anyway, tune in, Friday, crazy Russian news update. Today, the news about NATO is a little different. Ukraine will participate in the largest NATO cybersecurity exercise for the first time. The Locked Shields 2024 exercise will be held in Estonia under the auspices of NATO and It'll include Ukraine. More than 4,000 experts from over 40 countries will participate in that exercise. They will be tasked with defeating the infrastructure of a fictional country from cyber attacks of bad guys. Oh, perhaps Russia. Oh, I don't know. In conditions with mimicking real-life scenarios and situations. The expansion of participants uh, compared to the last year and the inclusion of new partners demonstrates the importance of these exercises in fostering international cooperation in cyber defense. Ukraine joined the NATO Cyber Center shortly after the full-scale Russian invasion began in February of 2022. And in my opinion, that is a small but very important step on the road for Ukraine to become a full-blown, regular member of NATO. And the next news is diplomatic, or diplomatically scandalous, or diplomatic scandalous, you know, <laughs> whatever I should say. France, France recalled its ambassador to Azerbaijan and... Baku, the capital of Azerbaijan, accused Paris of destructive activities 
and talking in a language of threats and pressure. For what the heck has happened? Um, now I must give you a little um, lesson in the relationship between Azerbaijan and France. Uh, the two countries' relations started deteriorating after the Second Karabakh War between Azerbaijan and Armenia um, that happened in September 2020. In those days, French President Emmanuel Macron said that more than 300 fighters from the you know, illegal Islamic State were participating in a conflict on Azerbaijan's side. And according to Macron... Those fighters were transferred to Karabakh through the Turkish city of Gaziantep. The Azerbaijan president, Ilham Aliyev, called those accusations unacceptable and demanded that Macron would apologize. And of course he didn't. And ever since, the relationship has been getting sour, more and more sour. I remind you, France is a historic ally of Armenia, and Armenia and Azerbaijan have been, well, fighting recently. And um, there's so much politics involved, and basically Russia, also a long, long time ally of Armenia, betrayed Armenia. Vladimir Putin betrayed Armenia, and um, ah, big mess. Anyway. Ever since that scandal in 2020, there have been many diplomatic actions and protests, um, too many to mention, really. And now we're seeing another escalation. It's a pretty sad situation because every diplomatic escalation is basically not good. But, oh boy, this particular situation is making Russia propaganda happy. Uh, See what they're doing? The evil West, the NATO country, France, the God, no good bombs, French. They're executing the order of its master, the USA. They're just the puppets, you know. There, the USA says jump, and they ask how high, and then they do it again. They're doing it again now. And that's pretty much what the narrative of the Russian propaganda is. <laughs> Sad. Um, and the last news, but not least, is um, it's major. It comes from uh, Tehran. Well, Tehran and, and Israel and Tel Aviv. Uh, Iran fired more than uh, 300 drones and cruise missiles and ballistic missiles towards Israel on Sunday night. Uh, check this out. According to the Israeli Defense Forces, um, you know, they're called IDF, the air defense systems of the country intercepted almost all of the air um, targets, missiles, drones, 99% to be exact. Some reached the destination and exploded, uh, you've seen in the video. But uh, absolute majority were intercepted. Some missiles reached destination right here in um, the city of Nevatim and Nevatim Air Base in the southern district of Israel. There were no fatalities reported, but one person was injured, a seven-year-old girl from a Bedouin village who was seriously injured in um, a missile strike. And what we're seeing right now is the Iron Dome, Israel's uh, famous air defense system at work. It's supposed to be the best in the world, the most effective, the biggest and meanest in the world. And it's actually proved that it's the best in the world. Look, it took care of uh, Iranian missiles and drones and rockets easily.
And you see, you see in the system in action right now, it's shooting down the Iranian flying targets. By the way, many Russians also thought that there is an air defense system in Russia. It's supposed to be, it was supposed to be really good because there were about 20 trillion rubles were spent on that system. But uh, no such luck. Turned out to exist only on paper. Now, this is pretty serious and pretty scary. The whole, you know, the whole accident. Another major war is the last, absolute last thing that we all need right now. But something tells me there will be no war. Uh, there are questions to Iran. If it wanted to strike Israel and do the maximum damage possible... I think something is telling me, although I'm not a military expert in any way, but something is telling me they would act in a different way. They would not warn anyone in advance that they were going to strike. This whole thing looked like more of a, like a performance. Uh, Iran was kind of saving face, acting after Israel executed a missile strike on Iranian embassy. And by the way, I personally condemn the attack on the embassy. No matter what, the embassies must be protected and untouched. Israeli, Russian, American, I don't know, Zambian, Iranian, uh, North Korean. If we start bombing embassies, that's going to be a complete chaos, okay? So by bombing the embassy, um, I don't know, obviously, I don't know what Israeli um, leadership that was making it, who, whoever was making that decision, I don't know what they were thinking. Um, bombing embassy, Iranian or not, is definitely not the right thing. So Iran has kept its face. It launched an attack of 300 plus units and missiles, you know, whatever, drones, and <coughs> warned, warned before the launch that it was launching. And 99% uh, of the missiles and drones, air targets, were easily intercepted. And I'm betting this conflict is over for now. Well, perhaps it's frozen, but there will be no retaliation from Israel to Iran, and there will be no escalation, at least in uh, the you know following weeks, perhaps months. Um, there won't be any strikes from both sides. And before I finish the stream, I want to show you something real funny, something I expect from Iran, to be honest with you. It doesn't surprise me what you're going to see now. This is the territory of Iran. Own drone that they launched. It got tangled in the power, HV power supply line. Again, this is Iranian drone, and I think it's fully loaded, and <laughs> it's the territory of Iran. That's a perfect picture of Iran right me and for me, <laughs> folks. And this is it for the world news update today. I suggest now you go and check out another video I made documenting how I was leaving Putin's Russia. The link is right here. Please check this out.